So, hey, everybody, super excited to be here with you all today with another episode of the Headstrong Podcast. Um, I'm your host, Danielle Mills, and I'm super excited because we have a really, really special guest. She's an author, she's an entrepreneur, she's a business owner, she's killing it. And the last thing of all, which is my favorite thing about this lady, is that she's actually a friend, and we go way back to those days at IMG Voluntary Tennis Academy, but I don't wanna take up too much of this intro. I wanna go ahead and have Jennifer introduce herself to you guys because if you don't already know her, she's awesome. So, so Jennifer, can you tell, tell everybody just a little bit about yourself and then we'll, we'll jump into this? Oh, thanks for having me, Danielle. We go way back to our IMG Academy days and being out there training like nearly eight hours a day and that hot Florida sun. <laughs> And that's where we met, is at IMG Academy. And for those that don't know, it's one of the largest sports academies in the world. And I like to describe it as um, the place to go. It's kind of like the Hunger Games, but for sports. Like, that's where I grew up <laughs> training real. next to some of the best athletes in the world. And, and I didn't end up being one of the best athletes in the world, which is a part of my story. But that striving to, to be there is how and where and when we first met. So a little bit about me, I'm a former professional athlete, and then I was a Division One head coach, became a stay-at-home mama, and that transitioned to being a business owner, and I became a business owner and a single mama at the exact same moment, and I had my own business for about five years, that, that led into consulting, which led into speaking, and just recently, about um, earlier this year, I took the reverse leap of sorts, because everyone wants to leap into entrepreneurship. I left it back into being an employee and I thought that was going to provide me with some awesome stability and I became an employee again. So that's where our story and that's where we're meeting right now has kind of linked up. <laughs> wow. So, so talk to me about what was it like going from being in full control of everything that you do as an entrepreneur, then yeah. to going back to being, you know, an employee, like what made you want to go back? So the biggest thing was that I realized that employees get paid on the 15th and the 30th of every month. <laughs> and I couldn't believe that because whether you do a good job or not, you still get paid, which blew my mind being an entrepreneur. And um, I decided that's what I wanted was a little more stability. So I got hired by the uh, amazing sports and entertainment agency out of New York City. They're, they're a global agency. And it's, it started off with a bang. It really did. It was kind of like the dream job. Wow. So, so talk, <laughs> to, to, I mean, you go from, from being an entrepreneur to like getting your dream job. Um, how was it though? Like, did you feel like everything was exactly like you expected or was it, did anything change? Yeah. So I basically uh, was flown to New York city with the agency and I opened up the offsite. I spoke before the North America CEO and the global CEO who had flown in from London and that was amazing. And the next day I presented to a billionaire on the 40th floor of this big building uh, overlooking Central Park. And like, I'm on top of the world, right? This is all of my giftings and skills coming together. And I'm just so thrilled. And about like 86, 87 days later, I'm laid off due to the <laughs> current uh, uh, thing that everyone has been going through, which is like the COVID coronavirus crisis. So I went from literally being on the top of the world to below zero uh, in no time at all. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. I know a lot of the listeners on here can, can totally relate or they know somebody who has experienced being laid off. Um, Jennifer, what, what do you think, how do you think you, you handle that? And what did you kind of do to, to deal with that? I know it must have been really hard. Yeah. So what's interesting is there's a lot of, um, let's say shame around losing your job. There is, I mean, everything that's connected with having a job, it's your security. For a lot of people, it's their identity, but then also it's your health care. It's the way that you provide for your children. And for me, I looked and I'm like, I have felt a lot of shame before, like not making enough money to be able to, you know, take care of my little guys. I have two young, um, and I would say small, but they're pretty big little kids. They're eight and five. And when my little guy, my, my five-year-old turns to me and asks me after I've been laid off, like, mommy, do we have enough money for food? That does something to you, right? It just kind of breaks you in a way that you're not expecting. And so 
for the first time in my life, I went on LinkedIn and I usually wait a couple years before I even talk about emotional things publicly. And I just decided to write a post about where I was at and be very transparent and share it with people. Yeah, that that is so courageous that you decided to to put it all out there on LinkedIn. I know me personally, I'm I'm kind of the same way. Like when it comes to something so personal and you know it's really hard, I'd be you know a little little um, scared to to put it out there like that. What made you get the courage to to put it out there, and what did you think the response was going to be? Were you expecting yeah. it to 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 do as well as it did? Right. I, I'm a big consumer of podcasts like these. And um, also, I listen to a lot of thought leaders. And I just had noticed during this crisis of, I mean, over 20 million people have lost their jobs that they haven't really identified that they're disconnected from their audience. You know, a lot of them are coming at you from their personal gym, or they're eating a meal that was just prepared for them by their staff. And like, no offense, like, I understand the hustle that it took to accomplish those things. But you know, I didn't want to see like another celebrity like quarantining their partner in their house on the property of their other house. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> now this is getting a little out of control. So what I mean by out of control is where is the every man? Where is that person who is broke? Who is dealing with this struggle and this crisis in a way that I can relate to? And Cicero has a great quote that is, I criticize by creation, not by finding fault. So I said, okay, instead of criticizing all these people, I'm going to create and I'm going to be real and say, yeah, I'm broke. And yeah, I'm laid off. And the post started off with, I am, I'm not special. Um, yesterday I was laid off. And that's how it started. And it's a short post, but it tells a bit about my story. And it went viral. And it went viral I, for me. It had over 10 million views, over 500 shares, like U.S. News and World Report contacted me, Bloomberg News contacted me. And and one amazing thing, well, loads of amazing things happened, thousands of comments and stories, but I ended up getting a job from that post, a new job. Wow. So guys that are, you're listening, you can see the power of LinkedIn, you know, like th- she put herself out there. She was courageous. She decided, Hey, I'm, I'm going to put myself out there. And just by way of that, this post has gone viral. And by way of that, she now has a new job. That is so awesome. Like I was somebody who saw this post and I was, first of all, I was shocked, but I was really intrigued because I saw all the comments and the, and what was happening with it. And, you know, for me reading through those comments, just so many people relating to you going through the same thing Mm -hmm. and, and giving encouragement, but also kind of like uh, not sure what the future holds. So it, it was right. really, really cool. And I'm so happy to hear that by way of that, you now have a new job. That's awesome. That's great. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thanks. I will tell you that LinkedIn and most social media, it's a place where we show all of our high points, right? It's like, this is a highlight reel of everything that I've done. And specifically, LinkedIn is not a place for where people personally disclose. But what's happening is our personal lives and our professional lives are at this cross section when we have crisis. So that's why LinkedIn is becoming a great tool to be able to say, hey, look, I just lost my job. I'm struggling. Here's what I'm looking for. Like, this is how you can help. Absolutely. And one thing that I'll say, just based off of me kind of looking at your own profile and just kind of analyzing your post, because, you know, something that I do is I look at a lot of LinkedIn and I study it and I try to see how I can help others, you know, improve and, you know, brand themselves through LinkedIn. So one thing that I'd like to highlight to the audience is you did a really great job with putting this post out there, but also creating intrigue for your audience to say, let me, let me look into Jennifer Magley. Let me see who is this lady. She seems awesome. Let me, let me dive into this. And then they're looking at your profile and you've done a great job on your profile of putting videos, putting all of your accomplishments, your accolades. And it really makes a person wonder like, whoa, this lady is on fire. I, I, I want to work with her. So what you did was just phenomenal. And I want to commend you for that. And I'm so happy that it, it created such a buzz. But I think ultimately it left, it left the consumer feeling like, wow, I have hope. Like you inspired a lot of people with that, which is great. Oh, thanks. Thank you. I, I, I didn't realize that just putting it all out there and keeping it real that other people would reveal and share their stories. Like you mentioned, there's thousands and thousands of comments of stories that are 
so powerful, you know, so people that are admitting for the first time that they were homeless with their children and living in their cars, like literally starting out with, I've never told anyone this, but there was a time that I was fill in the blank. And so that's one thing I didn't know that when you open up in that way, that other people will then open up to, to you. Oh, definitely. That was super powerful. One thing that, that I really want to, to dive into, and I know the listeners would like to know a little bit more about your, your upbringing and how you became mm-hmm. such a, a confident, powerful lady. Um, what do you really attribute that to? And, and to walk us through kind of what, what your upbringing looked like. Was it a normal upbringing? Yeah, I mean, it's, for us, training like eight hours a day is what we think is normal. Um, but what's, what's interesting is that uh, good work is often rewarded with more work, right? And that's kind of what it is in sports. And so I have a sports background. My father was a professional basketball player. And my parents actually own a professional sports league now called the Basketball League. And so we're a sports, sports, sports family. And that that growing up in that way kind of highlighted the importance of reaching your full potential, which translated into achieving, which is wonderful. But the fact is what got you here won't get you there, right? So I had a lot of achievements and I did a lot of things, but since my goals were so high, I never reached them. (laughs) So I was constantly striving, never arriving and feeling, and even now learning to love myself when I'm not achieving is still a journey because the way I was brought up was wonderful but at the same time, you know, I'm always almost fighting off this inner voice that says that you could be doing more and that you should be doing more. So it's, it's the good and the bad. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I'm, I've got my little guys in sports now, but at the same time, I, I, don't, I don't put a lot of pressure or heat on it. I'm just like, whatever, you like engineering, like, just do that. You know, <laughs> I don't, it's whatever you want to do. So I'm grateful for my parents. They gave me like that work ethic but I'm the one that really kind of got addicted to achieving, if that makes any sense. Oh, definitely. When you, when you said that, I kind of, you know, it's rare that I get to talk to somebody who, who can say something like that and me to to relate to it so much and to feel like I completely relate to you with always wanting to achieve more and wanting to do more. And it's only after, you know, coming out of playing, you know, pro sports and being an athlete that I'm like, that's not everybody's mindset. You know, like that's not, that's not common. So another question I'll ask you is, do you feel like this mindset that you had from sports has translated nicely over into your, your entrepreneurship and having your own business and now kind of working for another company you like? Yes, I do. I think that I will say that the mentality and the work ethic has helped a lot. But you want to know the biggest thing that helped me kind of grasp what it means to succeed with business was when I took an unlikely turn, I was a division one head coach um, for tennis. And then I became a, a part of direct sales. And I had never even put on mascara in my entire life. And I became a beauty consultant, y'all. So I did that for five years. Like I literally, literally went from not being able to put on mascara to selling $3,000 worth of mascara and like, 30 minutes. And that's what taught me the power of massive asking and huge numbers of, uh, in order to succeed. So uh, that's that, you know, you got, we have the work ethic and everyone has a work ethic. It's just a matter of where you got it from. Mine happens to come from sports, but then this ability to ask questions and be rejected over and over again, that's where I refined it was in this kind of pseudo hustle of, you know, you own your own business, but not completely because you're selling a direct sales product. And that's where now as a field recruiter with AMBA, that helps a lot is because I developed this technique. And I don't know if you've heard about this. I developed a technique. I've written about it in magazines and I teach about it, speak about it. It's um, how to get anyone in the world to respond to you. Tell us about it. What is it? Yeah. (laughs) It's called um, high, low circular. And it's, it's, now, I will preface this by saying you have to be, like, intentional and have a good heart. Otherwise, what I'm about to say is going to creep you out. So, I'm ready. But, Bring it yeah, on. So, yeah, you take the sports-like mentality of hard work and the, the lessons from direct sales, and now I have this method. So you try to – let's say who's one person you'd love to get in touch with, like, for them to respond to you, Daniel? 
would I like to get in touch with? Um, you know, I had some, some really close doubles partners that I used to play with, but I just have not been in touch with them for a long time. I don't know if that's a good example, but some of them live in like Europe. Um, I have a doubles partner named um, Roxanne I'd love to be in touch with. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's like Roxanne, and let's say she's like so big time now that she wouldn't even respond to your text. <laughs> oh, let's use a different person then. Let's use um, a, Salone, a, a Salone Stevens who I knew, but now she's so big that maybe she won't now talk to Now she's so me. big. All right. Yeah. Sloan, she's, Sloan's big time. I know. Like going to the store and her picture's up. I'm like, what? Get it, girl. So you would try to reach out to her through email or calling her immediately. So you would go to the, the, the company's website, like her company's website. And you would figure out like what her email is. Maybe it's through someone else's uh, or on LinkedIn, you would find it and you would send a message to her. If she doesn't respond, that's high. You would go to the lowest person within her organization. Oftentimes that's somebody who's a former employee or an intern and there's always a door that's open. So people that are lower within the organization will provide you with information or a way of getting in touch with them or forwarding your message. And if that didn't work, you would draw a circle around her and you would figure out what the touch points were of her life and intentionally connect with people and say, Hey, you know, this is what I'm interested in. I'm interested in getting in touch with her. Or you could lead with, I too care about children that are hunger at risk. So how can I plug into this organization? So what happens when you plug into the people and around the circle is that eventually the person in the middle will say like, I've never heard of Danielle. You know Danielle? Oh my gosh, you know her? And then they will be inviting you to lunch. And so that is the Hilo circular method that I've wow. created and that I take from direct sales and also applied now as a recruiter of getting people to respond. And even no is a response. <laughs> yeah, that is that is awesome because so many people like I don't know if you've watched a lot of um or you're familiar, of course you're probably familiar, but you watch a lot of like Gary V. And yeah. he talks a lot about how he tells people, you know, if you want to do something, you got to reach out to people and be in their inbox. And then people will come back and say, well, I reached out to like 20 people and nobody responded. And he's like, bro, you didn't do any work. You got to do this and be consistent. And, and I love how you <laughs> just explain that, that method because there's so much strategy involved with that. And the chances of you connecting with the person goes up immensely based on following that strategy. I think that's awesome that you share that with us. That's awesome. Oh, Oh, thanks. I, I strongly believe in layering people. And that's something that it's like, okay, you got in touch with them. But now what? Let's say they told you no. How do you move forward? And I think it's all about adding value. So layering is those, you know, those points of contact. How many points of contact do we need to have to go to different layers of the relationship? So if someone is always is telling me no, then I get a little more information, you know, about what the no is so that it's never, I'm never getting off the phone or out of the conversation. I'm thinking, okay, now sounds like it's a bad time, but what do I, can I give you a call in six weeks to check on you and see how you're doing? <laughs> and people say yes, because I'm a connector. I love connecting people and making those introductions bring me a lot of joy. So when you lead intentionally with connection and then you, you get a lot farther, you know, than just, Hey, this is my product, you know, check this out. Oh my gosh. And with you saying that, it, what it really made me think about is how many times on LinkedIn, and I'm sure you experienced this. Do you get people in your inbox who copy paste a message right. oh <laughs> trying <laughs> to name. sell their service <laughs> or product? And it's <laughs> like legitimately a copy paste method. And you mm -hmm. know, what I, what I tend to do is I don't respond to those messages, but Think about like, for those of you guys listening, like that is not the approach you want to take ever when you, when you try to get yeah. somebody to, to pay attention to you, but it's just, people will do the easiest thing and they think that they're going to get a good result. And that's just not the way to go about it. So basically what you're saying is just so much better by personalizing it and adding value and being consistent, but you're never like bothering the person because they like you so much and they enjoy being with you and talking with you. So that, that's awesome yeah. that you shared that. No, you hit it on the head. I think that personalization and private messages are the way that I have used LinkedIn to master it. Yeah, I have, you know, so many connection points and thousands of requests now on LinkedIn, but that's not how I use LinkedIn. The way that I use LinkedIn is to bolster my in-person events. For example, once a month, I host a power lunch, and that's to introduce all the women that I want to know each other. 
it's not industry specific. There's no agenda and there's no speaker. So mm -hmm. instead of me writing all of these emails to introduce this lady to this lady, I decided let's just all have them come to a lunch. And the first time I did it, I had like 30 of my girlfriends there. I had invited 50, but then it's grown within the year to, I have over a thousand women on the list and over 80 women buy tickets and come. And we literally, you know, I know everyone there, but they don't know each other. And so there's 80 women for lunch and it's not a click every month because it's not a click. That's why women come. The randomness is the draw. So that's how I use social media is that I privately invite 10 women a day to the next lunch. And that's one of the great things that I do. So if I don't have some massive social following. I'm not some Instagram star. Instagram is not my platform. I like LinkedIn and I use LinkedIn to bolster in-person events. Wow, that's that's awesome. I feel like these luncheons are, are phenomenal. Just getting all these high fun. power <laughs> ladies and all these different industries to come together yeah. to network and to grow because I'm sure you know you recognize the power of networking and the power of mm -hmm. leveraging your contacts. And so many people on LinkedIn just like and comment, but they never make a real connection. And I think right. it's awesome that you're fostering those relationships through through, the, through these luncheons. I mean, are they all in Indiana? Like, I want to go. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, we need to take, take this show on the road. And yeah, I think, maybe like, a virtual one, the, one for now. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that, that I am obsessed with, and I read a lot of books, like I'm compulsive. So this year I'm trying, this month I'm trying to read 15 books, but each month I'm reading between when like five? 13 to 15, <laughs> mm -hmm, like 13 okay. to 15 books a month, audio and paper books. I just, I figured if Warren Buffett and Bill Gates read like a couple hundred pages a day, I need to read like thousands of pages <laughs> just to, you know? So um, anyways, uh, I read a bunch of books on storytelling and asking and also negotiating. So all of that leads into being able to create and craft very succinct scripts. Mm. Um, so for example, if you're going to send a message to someone on LinkedIn, you can say, thanks for your connection. I have the monthly lunch. Uh, and at, with like two ex, two sentence explanation, uh, would love to invite you. What's your email? Or if you have an ask of someone, I'm a speaker. I do I do a lot of closing keynotes, like usually two three thousand people a year. It's really great. And if I am pitching myself to speak, I'll say, thanks so much for your connection. Um, I do a lot. I do mostly keynote talks. Are you able to keep me top top of mind next time you need an MC or a host for an event? So the, the close is there's always a call to action, but the close is a very soft one. Are you able to keep me top of mind? Wow. You are, you're giving the, the audience so much value right now. Like this is oh. awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. I, I'm just so excited to, to see like what, what you have coming up. Like, let, let me ask you this though, because we don't, we're all dealing with COVID-19 and most of us are in our, in our houses, in our condos, in our apartments, and we're, you know, at home. What have you been doing to, to maximize this time at home? And how do you think you will be when you come out of this? Yeah, so I'm, I want to preface this by saying, I know I'm compulsive. I know I'm a recovering perfectionist people pleaser. And I also know that I'm really dependent on achievement to feel certain feelings. So those are things I'm working through. So I just want to say I'm aware everyone's different. For me, that has been continuing my morning, like rituals of waking up super early and reading and doing, you know, journaling and exercising. And I've started writing a book. Now, those are all like the goopy Gwen things, <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow, which I don't know what to think about, Goop, whatever. But that's exactly, you know, something that someone from that there would say. Now, the other part of me, when I'm not achieving those things um, during the day, says just do whatever causes the least amount of shame and the least amount of self-judgment for yourself. So if you say, oh, I want to do all these things and you don't do them, who cares? Like, it's not that big of a deal. If you just want to relax and watch TV, own that. Like, during this time, during COVID, I just caught up and binge watch. Like, that's nothing to be ashamed of. Like, we all just need to do what works for us. So that's what I would encourage like people to do is just do whatever causes the least amount of like self-judgment. 
That's a great point because I know like during this time, there's a lot of pressure on people to try to yeah. maximize it. <laughs> And like, how are you doing? What are you doing to better yourself? Are you doing your self development? What books are you reading? And all of this right, stuff. And right. you know, it's it's true. It, it is important to to not judge yourself if you don't achieve everything that you wanted to achieve during this unknown period of time that we are in this in this situation. So I'm glad that that you that you mentioned that. Um, on the topic of books, because I know this audience is a audience that does want to better themselves. What would your top three books be at the moment, or maybe your top three fa favorite books? Yeah, so lo the book, probably the top three books that I've read recently would be, um, this one was in 2019, but it's Chris Voss's Never Split the Difference. Oh my Have God, that one. it's incredible. <laughs> I've been uh -huh. reading it though. So good. Oh, read it. It's a former FBI hostage negotiator. He teaches you how to get everything you want. Really, really good. Yeah, I... <laughs> I love it. And it gives you scripts. It gives you scripts of how to handle different situations, whether that's pricing or if you do a lot of consulting or freelance work, like how to do these things. Cause nobody teaches us that, right? Especially as women, nobody really teaches us that. The second book is I actually have it right here. Now this is kind of like nerdy, nerdy, but um, Lisa, Lisa Kron's um, story genius. I would say it's a, how to use brain science basically to tell a story. Mm. And you may not be looking to write fiction in the way that she's, she's uh, basically encouraging the reader to do, but it allowed me to see that we're all living our own fiction. And the way that we come into COVID is our little fiction and our little story if we've, that we've told ourselves. So if plot is what's happened to us, story is how it changes us. Like so that. all of our little fictions have been disrupted by this crisis right now during this pandemic. So I think it's a really good book if you're looking to expand how to tell a story and how to kind of interpret your own story, your life story. And then the third book um, is just a fun read. I would say The Power by Naomi Alderman. And it's mm -hmm. about how women uh, suddenly get power in their hands and how that changes the dynamics of who's in control of the world. Oh, wow. Okay. But let's well, say that last one one more time. <laughs> yep. It's The Power. The Power by the Naomi power. Alderman. And it's, it's, I mean, it's a little sci-fi-ish, but uh, I definitely thought it was a, a really interesting concept and, and kind of commentary on society and women and power. So, yeah. Wow. Just to, to piggyback off of that, the powerful women, you know, with you being such a, a powerful woman that has achieved so much in her life, I'm sure a lot of the, the women listening to this are wondering, you know, how do you, how do you manage it all? How do you, how do you do it all? And how do you make it look so effortless all the time? Like what is your secret sauce and can you share it with us? You're kind. And the answer is I don't, it is a hot mess over here. Um, <laughs> literally a mess. Like at the beginning I was shifting the screen so you wouldn't see the mess in the background. So I don't really believe in like balance at all. I believe we're, it's putting everything in my life into a blender and just pressing the button and hoping I remember to put the top on, you know, and even right now, like people that if you're at home and you're working, you have kids running around or you're caregiving or you have pets or older people in your life that you're taking care of. How do you just kind of stay on what you think is a, a track even? And my answer is just blend it all together know that nothing is going to be perfect. And going back to being an athlete, it's that feeling that, you know, when you're at the movies, you're like, I should be training. And then when you're training, you're like, I'm missing out on having a life. I should be at the movies. <laughs> and so I've stopped that, you know, I'm not going to be on that train anymore that, oh, when I'm working, I should be a better mom. And when I'm, you know, being a mom, I should be working. No, you know, I'm not, I just have gotten off of that guilt train. And I said, okay, this is just all going to be in a blender and go from there. I don't, I don't. That's the answer is I don't. <laughs> okay. No, I like that. I like that you were so, so honest about that. Um, I, I would say too, like, if women who are listening to this right now are, are not feeling confident and their, their mindsets are kind of negative, what advice would you give them to, to get them out of that zone and to allow them to see, you know, the benefits of having that positive go-getter mindset that you possess so freak so amazingly yeah I would say that what does life look like if you never achieve 
or do one more thing? You know, who are you without even going for it? And that is the foundation of everything, is that if we know that I'm enough, whether I go for my dream or the way that I want and I accomplish it or I don't, then I can finally have what? Peace. I can finally have love. I can finally have acceptance and acceptance of my strengths and my weaknesses. And that's a really strong starting point for whatever you want to build up to. So if you're like, gosh, I don't know if I can do it, accept it and say, that's okay. You know, I don't know if I can do this, but I might try. And I'm going to experiment by doing one little thing today and we'll take it from there. And one little baby step at a time and not thinking, you know, comparison is the biggest thief of joy. It's a huge thief of joy. So thinking to yourself, like, it doesn't matter what her step looks like or anyone else's step, but I'm taking my small step today. Wow. You're just dropping keys and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm, I'm in awe right now. This is That's awesome. Sweet. This has been phenomenal. So um, again, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Like for those of you listening, like we go back so far and, and Jennifer doesn't know this, but I really looked up to Jennifer growing up. Like she was this like kick butt tennis player. And like, I was still like trying to get better. Cause you know, a lot of you remember from my last episode, I didn't, I wasn't always good at tennis. So I would watch her and she would be practicing and she would just look awesome. So I really looked up to her. So I'm just so happy that we've come full circle and we're now in this space. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty rewarding. <laughs> but I'm, pr I'm proud of you because it's not easy to, to admit, you know, the flaws of the journey and the difficult portions. And I think that that's what is kind of evolving right now with social during this time of crisis is that everybody doesn't want to see just the highlights anymore. They want to see like what it looks like to stumble, to fall, to fail, because that's what I can relate to most. Like the other thing is people sometimes have this perception that you think you're perfect unless you actually tell them the truth of, of where you're at. So that's one of the biggest things that I try to do now to relate to people is just to say like, hey, often I see myself as a piece of fruit in a grocery store that you go to pick up and it looks good, but then when you turn it over, it's rotten on the bottom and that's me. So I've just got to <laughs> accept my imperfections. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. for real for real. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I just love it. Jennifer, how can, how can our audience get, get more of you? Like what, how can they get in touch with you? Do you have anything that's coming up that you want to talk about? Like, I just want them to get more of you because you're just awesome. Oh, thanks. Yeah. You can follow me on Instagram, Jennifer Magley. I'm probably a little more active on LinkedIn, strangely. So my name is just Jennifer Magley on LinkedIn and my website is magleyjennifer.com. And I will tell you, I have a lot of messages still that are unread in my inbox, which is rare. It's because of this post. So I'm like a, like a thousand messages behind, which is bizarre, but they might not be from a thousand people. It just might be like from two or three. I don't know yet. So I've got to, <laughs> I, I doubt it. I bet it's a lot. <laughs> but do, yeah, feel free to reach out um, to me and I'm happy to connect. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for, for coming on here and, sh and dropping your words of wisdom with the audience. I know that they got so much out of it. I learned a ton just from speaking with you. I definitely need to speak with you more and I really Same. appreciate you coming <laughs> on. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye everybody. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode. Um, every week we'll come through with more guests, bringing you more value so that you can get through whatever you're going through and improve your mindset and reach your fullest potential. So we appreciate you and, and talk to you guys next week. Thank you.